Hey guys, it's Bill from Linda, Tennessee. So this weekend has been very productive. Uh, Friday night, I uh, pulled an all-nighter, mocking up the mounts for the steering unit here. And then yesterday, I got them all put together and uh, pretty much got it to where it sits right now. Uh, let's see, what is it? The other day, I had this thing strapped to... Uh, some ratchet straps up into the rafters to get it held in position so I could make the measurements and make these mounts. Um, I made a quick little video of that. So I'll show you that right now. Here is my setup uh, for how to hold this steering unit in space and get some measurements so I can make some bracketry, some a frame of such. Uh, it needs to be pretty stout because you're going to, you know, I'm going to be pulling on this steering wheel to, you know, stand up or get on and off the machine or who knows, but it needs to be really stout. And that, um, assist unit actually does, uh, make a lot of torque. So it needs to, uh, not move, but yeah, that's how I did it. I said I was going to probably try and use my rafters and, uh, <laughs> have this thing all suspended there. Just got a little piece of string here. And this was just a basically a whole bunch of make a setting, stand back, look at it, make a setting, stand back and look at it, move the tractor over a little bit, oh, move it too far, move the back over some, move the front over. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, kind of centered. It's more or less straight up and down. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's not it's not quite straight up and down, but I mean, ultimately it really doesn't matter if it's 100% perfect. Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. I was kind of happy how that worked. Um, and then that's how I got to where I am right now. So, uh, uh, basically these mounts just consist of, it's just eighth inch, uh, sheet metal and they were made in two parts. This first part here, and then this part was made, uh, separately Had this part sort of up where I think I thought I wanted it and had this one bolted to the steering unit there and then just tacked it together and that's it. And then took it off and put this little stiffening brace on there. I don't know if this is necessary. Uh, but I put it there anyway, and then there was, I needed some way to, to hold it from, you know, moving forward and backwards. So uh, I just grabbed one of these mount, one of these, um, bolts on the steering unit. And again, made just a two piece, this top piece and then this bottom piece. And it just spanned across the, uh, the two mounts. So that's it. Pretty simple. Really this hole right here is, um, it's for access so that I can slide that U joint up um that's not where it needs to be it needs to be more so if i have the u-joint about right there then i undo that bolt and then i can just slide it up and that hole is all i needed just for clearance to uh to allow that to happen i've got these welded on the other side is better than this um i wasn't able to blend it in as good as i want to but it doesn't really matter you're not gonna be able to see it anyway but uh i welded these on permanently i kind of Tossed around the idea, should I bolt them in, in case I needed to remove it, and thinking, you know, for maintenance purposes. Um, but then I was like, you know, what am I going to need to maintenance this thing? But as it turns out, I needed to maintenance this thing about three times. <laughs> um, so, at, at, and at the time, I just had it tacked here, but I was able to do everything I needed to do to it without breaking those tacks. So I figured, you know, that should be good to go for welding it. And the problem that I was having is um, the way these U-joints are phased. Um, so you got this part here, um, and then it's 90 degrees, obviously, to this part here. But this part, and there's a, um, a mirror one up top. And from the factory, the Nissan drive shaft, these were out of phase by about 45 degrees or so. Um, and in a drive shaft on your car, they're in phase. So this one lines up directly with the one above it, um, but it wasn't like that. So I mimicked that when I when I put this together. I didn't know why, but the problem I was having is whenever I got close to the extremes of travel on either side, left or right, um, the U-joints were kind of getting in a bind just because of where they were, um, you know. So that's it. That's really all the problem was. So I just kind of undid those, undid that and, and redid it. And that, you know, that involved taking this apart about three times to get it right. 
and uh, it's right now. So that's cool. I'm pretty happy with that. And then uh, there's a little controller for this thing. I think I've described it before, but the way this happens is inside here, there's a there's like a coupling. It's got like think of it. It's got like little spiders coming down this way, and then uh, opposing spiders going this way with a little piece of rubber in the middle of it. It's kind of like a Lovejoy connection, if you know what that is. But then there's a sensor between these two spiders, and ever, whenever you turn the wheel, that the rubber in the middle of them compresses a little bit, and the sensor notices that there's been some torque applied to it. And so whenever it sees that the torque has been applied, it sends power to this controller right here, which sends power to the motor, and it helps you. And in this controller, I just mounted that, pretty simple. Uh, a really quick, easy way of figuring out where your mounting holes are is you take your, your controller, you set it down on a piece of manila envelope, or whatever you have, and um, you cut this out to the size of the controller, and then you take a little ball peen hammer, and then you just whack where the holes are, and it cuts nice, perfect little circles. And then you take this in the orientation that needs to be when it's up here, and then you just um, you just put it right there, and that's where your holes go. So that's right here. How does it go? We're gonna make this work like that. Nope, like this. Yep. So you can see it's. It only goes one way, and I haven't found the way it goes. Anyway, that's how that works. And then also for this link right here, it was it was too high, maybe by maybe a bolt or so. So again, I did the same thing. Um, took this little bracket that's on the other side, put it on a piece of paper, hit the ball beam hammer where the holes are, and then just you know put it right there. And that's that's where the holes go. And you end up with with holes in the perfect spot every single time. And if you do a nice a nice circle. Whenever you center punch the hole, you go at it with an eighth inch drill first and then just make sure it's really close to the center. And then you get a, a slightly larger bit. And then as you're drilling it, uh, you just, you know, move the drill around however you need to to make sure that, that you're uh, right in the center of the, the hole that you, the circle that you drew. So that's how you do that. Um, yeah. Also, the other thing is I came through and I filled in all my holes. I had a whole bunch of extra holes from my... I, other ideas of how to do this. There's holes there and there and uh, likewise on the other side. And then these, this was not there either. Um, this I had to cut out because this was originally where the back seat fenders mounted. <laughs> if you can imagine that this was, uh, <laughs> this was, would have been the front going that way. So this is where the seat mounted. No, that's not true. This would have been the front going this way and that's where the seat mounted. Is that true? I don't know what's true. Anyway, the holes were, they were all corroded and I had to cut them out. So I put new metal in there. So that's what that is. And uh, yeah, this thing works really good. So let me um, put you on pause here for a minute and I'll get this thing hooked up and show you how it works. Okay, we're all hooked up. Uh, the connection of these is really, really simple. Um, you just gotta, I'm just using this lithium iron phosphate battery pack because I've just got, I had it sitting around as one does. Um, I also have a, a little lawn and garden a, um, AGM battery that I used with it initially, and that worked really good for my initial testing. Um, but then remember I was telling you about how this got all in a bind. Well, whenever this has too much torque, it just stops. <laughs> it says, I quit. I can't do this. It's too much. And, um, you know, you kind of go to manual steering. And while I was figuring that out, you know, I was cycling it through left, right, left, right, a bunch of times. And then it got to the point after I'd fixed the U-joints that it was just, it was just, uh, it would do a little bit of assist and then it would just go manual again. And it, you know, it would like, it was just locking up all the time. And I'm like, what is going on with this stupid thing? And I'm trying to figure this out and I'm like, so what's my battery voltage? <laughs> so that was it. Yeah. So a little AGM battery can only take so much power assist cycling, uh, before it, you know, runs itself out of juice. And what was happening was it would be, say 12 volts just sitting there resting and then as soon as I put a torque load on it with the steering it would go down to 7 volts and then this thing would shut off so <laughs> there you go so I got this uh, much much larger capacity lithium iron phosphate battery um, this is about one kilowatt hour it's uh, a lot so anyway yeah so the basic setup is uh, you got 12 volts plus and minus and then that goes to the the 12 volt leads that go into that controller I was telling you about and then uh, then there's just one wire coming out in this case. It's just an orange wire. There's a whole bunch of there's two other wires that come out of that controller Also, they would go to into a CAN bus of the car and then I suppose the car would uh, 
um, depending on how fast you're going or something, it would tell that motor to, to give more or less um, assist. So you want less assist when you're going 70 than you do when you're going five miles an hour in a parking lot. But in my case, I don't care. I want full blast um, whenever I want it. So that's how that works. So yeah, and then, uh, so got my little jumper there. And then for the now, this is just right here. And all you got to do is put this on, um, on positive. So this will be on the, whenever you turn the key on, this would, you know, then it would just arm your, arm your assist system here. So I'll kind of show you how this works. So with a little bit of effort, this is on rollers, so it's kind of easier, but with a bit of effort, you know, I can steer it and it works pretty good. Uh, but then as soon as I put this on here, you'll hear a click. There you go. There's a click. And then now, you know, now I can just turn it with one finger. That's about the only way I can demonstrate how easy this is to, to do. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I can, I can easily turn this thing with one finger now. And it's on rollers. When it's on, it's, when it's sitting on the tires, it's not as easy, but, um, you know, it is, it is easy when it's got the assist. So, and then I take this off and then, you know, there's, there's no way I can turn it with one finger now. I mean, it's, a, you know, it's a full, it's a full force thing. So that, that power assist thing really, really does work. And it's awesome because it's really quiet. And, you know, when, whenever it's, um, you know, whenever I'm using it, if I'm just, there you go, it's on. So now it's not really drawing any power. So it's not like a hydraulic system with a pump that's always running and it's obviously quiet. And then, uh, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's really powerful. So it's cool. And these, this is actually really small wire. This is only like, you know, 12 gauge or something. It really needs to be like eight or even four to get full, uh, amperage through it into the, into the controller there. So you can get full power out of it. Um, but yeah, so that's really, it's really awesome and it works really good. And, uh, towards the edges, towards the extremes of left and right steer, it becomes very difficult to turn at all because uh, j just the uh, geometry of the linkage um, means that there's not a lot of uh, torque being applied through that link over there. So it's just really hard to turn at the extremes of, of turning anyway. But I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem because, you know, when it's rolling, it'll be easier to turn than when it's just sitting here on concrete. So, um yeah, I find that in my Jeep. My Jeep has the same system, and um, it does steer when it's just sitting there, but it's a whole lot easier to steer when you're moving, so uh, it would be the same situation. And as for other stuff, I found kind of a cool place for other stuff. So little 12-volt battery, that's the, that's the one that I was talking about that I ran down. Uh, I'm going to make a little bracket and mount that right there, I think. And then, uh, I think, I don't really know. Yeah, I think so. And then the DC DC converter fits right there. It also fits uh, right here, but it fits it fits a little bit too well. I mean, it's very Tetrisy, which is kind of cool. Um, I could put it that way, or maybe I could mount it this way with the wires down or the wires up, or I could mount it right here. That fits really good, and the the hood still closes and doesn't interfere with anything. All this area in front here, I think I want to reserve that for like contactors, and uh, I'm going to have a main contactor for the uh, the controller for this motor and then I'll have a, a little reversing contactor for the winch um, So I think I want to reserve that space for that stuff up there uh, I also need to Figure out somewhere to put a radiator and I'm not really sure where that's going to go the controller I think I'm going to uh, mount it on top of the motor here, but again, I don't know uh, Alternatively, I could put the controller there where the battery is put the battery where that battery is uh, you know, and, and at some point there's going to be a, um, another half of the hood, you know, this part's going to be all sheet metal and come straight down, you know, roughly, yeah, roughly there. So that's going to, and it's probably going to curve up like this cause this is going to come up and then out and this will probably up and out and mimic that. So, but at any rate, there's going to be, you know, more, more, uh, room for stuff there. I also need to find a place for this. This is going to be the fuse for the steering. It's going to be a 50 amp or a 60 amp fuse for the steering. And I've got a little junction box somewhere, a little fuse block that I'll have for all my 12 volt stuff. 
cobalt stuff. I'm gonna. I need to have a, a fused connection for the controller. I'll need to have a. Uh, I'll have lights. I'm gonna have some fog lights, and um, I don't know some other stuff too. I'll have at some point there'll be a three point hitch back there, and a linear actuator. Uh, we'll run that, and then that'll need to be fused. So anyway, I've got I've got um, needs for for 12 volt accessories. So I got to find out somewhere to put that to. And like I say, this is going to have a, a thing coming up this way. And <laughs> this is the original uh, console for the Cub Cadet. I left that hole there because it's a really, it's the, it's the perfect size for the little uh, display that comes with the motor. So what I'm going to do is I blocked that off and um, just epoxied the, you know, epoxy those holes and I'll redrill those holes. Um, it was off center but I want to make it in this inner center here. And then there's three little screws down there, three little mounting screws. And this will have a piece of sheet metal over top of it with that hole cut out again, but it'll have a sheet metal over top of it. And then I can transfer those screw holes to this and then that will hold this. And then there'll be some other screws that will mount to the console. <laughs> so there's all that stuff going on. Um, yeah, but I'm thrilled beyond belief at how well that steering stuff works. So, um, oh yeah, and one more thing. So, all this epoxy back here, it's not quite dry yet, but I didn't, what happened, <laughs> it's kind of funny, I didn't really mix it very well, I guess, because this is what was left of the stuff, but it went exothermic on me. It started making its own heat. Epoxy will do that when it dries. So I guess that all the uh, resin, or all in the, mm, the mm, what's, the, what's the other half of a resin? You get resin and you got the other stuff. Escapes me. Anyway, two-part epoxy. Uh, I didn't stir it enough, and all the other part was down on the bottom, I guess. It went exothermic, melted this thing, and made that spill everywhere. And this is all dry and solid and hard like it's supposed to be, but this part isn't. This part is still kind of tacky and annoyingly tacky. So, But anyway, once that's dry, I'll come through. I'll cut that out, put me a little sheet metal cover over the top of that, and... Uh, yeah, get my dash panel. Because once that dash panel's up there, then I can figure out how I'm going to do the rest of it. So, that's what we did this weekend. Pretty exciting. So, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.